Hey everyone, it's Matt Paul here, and I'm excited to present AudioFuse 16 Rig, Arturia's flagship, top-of-the-line audio interface for hardware-focused musicians and producers. In this video, I'll show you its features, explain all its unique functions, and all the things it can do for you and your music making. Let's dive in. This remarkable device has a comprehensive array of features, setting it apart from all the other audio interfaces on the market today. With 16 high-quality analog inputs and 12 flexible analog outputs, ADAT expansion, two independent digital mixers, full standalone audio and MIDI routing, two digitally recallable preamps, speaker switching, reamping, built-in USB hub, and up to four headphone outputs, AudioFuse 16 rig has you covered no matter where your productions take you. Its color display and efficient menu system offer hands-on control over your workflow. On top of all this, the interface has a powerful routing matrix, letting audio and MIDI be directed in limitless creative ways, even if a computer is not connected. The sonic possibilities are huge, and only your imagination sets the boundaries. Included with AudioFuse 16 rig is our AudioFuse Control Center software and the extensive AudioFuse Creative Suite plugin bundle. We'll cover these in different videos. This great sounding and incredibly versatile audio interface is perfect for electronic musicians and producers with lots of keyboard and sound modules, modular synths, and outboard gear. We hope it will inspire you to create your best work. Let's start by going through the front panel. Right in the middle, you'll find a color display and controls that give you access to all of the interface's input and output settings, as well as control over the main and cue mixes, presets, MIDI, and general settings. To the left, we have combo inputs one and two with high-performance digitally controlled preamps for fast and accurate recall. These combo connectors support mic, line, or instrument level signals and make it easy to plug in a microphone or instrument or a synth that your friend spontaneously brought over and wants you to hear. No need to disconnect anything from the back, just plug in and start jamming. We even have a 3.5 millimeter stereo line input that you can use to plug in a smartphone, tablet, small synth, or any other device that you want to capture. Again, no need to disconnect anything from the back or to find adapters or special cables, just plug in and have fun. To the left of the interface, you'll find front panel outputs three and four. These special outputs mirror the outputs on the back, but have some secret powers like reamping to make it easy to experiment while you mix. These outputs can also be transformed into two separate headphone outputs, giving AudioFuse 16 rig as many as four headphone outputs, perfect for capturing small ensembles or podcasts. To the right, you'll find the monitoring section with a volume knob, mute button, and an assignable monitoring button for instant dim, mono, or AB switching. More on that in a separate video. Further to the right, we have the main headphone outputs with both quarter and 1 8 inch jacks. These outputs can be adjusted to suit any kind of headphones from very low to very high impedance, ensuring you always hear the best possible sound. The USB section has a handy USB hub with ports on the front and back. It also has a unique USB MIDI port that sends and receives MIDI data over USB even if a computer is not connected. And lastly, the Arturia button switches the unit on and off. AudioFuse 16 rig lets you access almost all of its functions directly from the front panel. The large, clickable encoder knob lets you navigate through the system. Let's go through all the menu options one by one. When you switch on your AudioFuse 16 rig, the first thing you see is the carousel or main menu. Use the encoder to navigate through inputs, outputs, mixer, cue, MIDI, settings, and presets pages. To access the input section, select it and press the encoder. To go back to the carousel, press the nearby back button, and if you ever get lost in the menu system, just double click the back button to return you to the main menu. For your convenience, there are six buttons on the left side of the screen that give you direct access to the most important sections of the menu system. The inputs overview section, input 1, input 2, the outputs overview section, the main mixer, and the cue mixer as well. The ins button takes you to the overview of all the inputs where you can see your levels and select individual channels for further changes. At the bottom of this page, you'll find the main output volume meter that shows the signal going to your studio monitors. Below the meters, you can find the output loudness level as set by the monitor knob as well as your clock source and sample rate. Select any channel with the encoder and click to access it. You can then control the input gain, use the pad function, invert the phase, and link or unlink two inputs together into a stereo pair. To come back to the main view, press the back button. Notice that this menu has two pages. 
The first page are the analog inputs, while the second page shows the digital ADAT inputs. To move to the second page, simply scroll past the end of page 1 to bring up page 2. You can also use the handy shortcut by pressing and holding the INS button while turning the encoder knob one click to the right. This shortcut works for all of the pages, so it's a good one to remember. Note that the ADAT inputs page only provides a visual reference of the inputs. It doesn't have any selectable channels or editable parameters. Speaking of the inputs, below the INS button, there are two buttons called IN1 and IN2. These provide quick access to the first two inputs. These channels support mic, line, and instrument level devices and have preamps with various controls. You'll probably need to visit these pages more frequently than the others, and that's why they have dedicated buttons for instant access. Let's move on to the output section. To do this, we can either press the back button and move the encoder to the right, or access the outputs directly by pressing the outs button. The first page of the output section shows the levels for both main monitors and phones outputs, as well as the remaining eight line outputs. You can access detailed pages for each output by selecting and clicking with the encoder. For monitor outputs, you can mute, dim, set to mono, as well as switch to your alternate set of speakers if you've enabled A-B monitoring. The second page shows which sources are routed to your speakers, while page 3 allows you to switch on A-B monitoring and define the various parameters of the A-B speaker switching function. We'll cover this in detail in a separate video. The phone's output page lets you see your headphone output level and show the audio sources going to the headphones. You can also choose three different impedance settings so you can ensure your headphones are sounding their best. The remaining outputs show you their output volume levels as well as the audio source that drives them. The next menu page is dedicated to the main mixer, which lets you mix all of your analog, digital and USB sources together in a stereo mix. We'll cover this in detail in a separate tutorial video, but here is a quick overview. The mixer page shows all of your channels with volume levels, fader positions and mute plus solo status, and to the right you can see also the USB channels as well as aux and master output channels. You can enter each channel's detailed settings with the encoder. Here you can mute or solo a track, change its volume level, panning, as well as to send signals off to external effects using the auxiliary or aux outputs. Notice that the mixer's master track levels are always shown at the right of the screen. The main master page offers a detailed look at the master channel. You can adjust its volume level, as well as set overall levels for each of the four aux sends, mute them, select whether they operate in pre or post fader modes, as well as link auxes into stereo pairs if you like. The main channels page is where you can see all the available channels and add them to your mixer. To add or remove a channel, select and click it with the encoder. Note that the main channels page has two parts. The first page shows all the analog and ADAT inputs, while the second page shows all the available USB channels coming out of your DAW software. The Q mixer is nearly identical to the main mixer except that it does not have aux sends. Beyond that, all of the other controls of the Q mixer work in exactly the same way as on the main mixer. One important thing to note is that the Q mixer has an on off switch. If you're not hearing the output on your Q mix, be sure to check that it is switched on. The next page in the carousel covers all MIDI related functions. Before we dive into this, it's worth mentioning that AudioFuse 16 rig is a fully equipped MIDI interface that supports hosted and standalone operation. This means that you can use it to send and receive MIDI data between all connected devices even if a computer isn't present. You can also control AudioFuse 16 rig's main mixer with MIDI by using an external MIDI controller. This is very cool because it means that you can use AudioFuse 16 rig as a live mixer on stage or as the centerpiece of a doorless jamming setup. The MIDI activity page shows all the MIDI signals flowing between inputs and outputs. There are indicators that light up when inputs and outputs are receiving data. In the inputs column, DIN1 is the rear panel MIDI in input, 
The USB host is the front panel USB MIDI input and the USB device is for signals coming from the computer. And then the outputs column, DIN1 and DIN2 are the two rear panel MIDI out and through connectors. Sync is the rear panel clock out mini jack connector while USB host is the front panel USB MIDI output. USB device is for signals coming from your computer. Next up we have the MIDI config page. The mode drop menu determines if the interface is in hosted or standalone mode. When hosted is selected, all MIDI inputs and outputs are routed to and from your computer. Basically, your DAW is in charge of all the MIDI routing. When standalone is selected, the interface handles its own routing based on your preferences in the MIDI config page. We'll cover that in a moment. The mixer control drop menu determines which MIDI input port will be used to control AudioFuse 16 Rig's main mixer. MIDI control means that you can use a MIDI keyboard, like one of our Keylab products, to get hands-on control over the mixer. It's faster and easier than using the front panel controls or the AFCC software, as you can just play the mixer just like you would any other instrument in the studio. Pro tip, if you're not planning to control the mixer with MIDI, set mixer control to none to prevent accidentally changing mixer settings while playing with a MIDI controller. And finally, we have the standalone MIDI page. When AudioFuse 16 rig is in a standalone mode, the interface needs to know how to route MIDI signals between its various ports. This is where you set that up. There are four destinations, DIN1, DIN2, SYNC, and USB host. Each destination can be connected to one of the following sources through its nearby drop menu, none, DIN, USB host, and USB plus DIN. Now let's look at the settings menu. First we have the clock settings page. This page has all of the parameters relating to the interface's digital clocking. It's important to set things up properly here since any incorrect settings can result in unwanted audio artifacts or no sound at all. Clock source determines where the interface looks for its master timing reference. Options include int, which is AudioFuse 16 rig's internal clock, ADAT, or world clock. The default setting is internal, and this is the correct setting most of the time. However, in some cases you may need to synchronize AudioFuse 16 rig to some other device through an ADAT or world clock connection. In that case, select ADAT or world clock. Note that only the first ADAT port can be used as a clock source. Sample rate sets the sampling rate at which the interface operates. Available choices range from 44.1 kHz to 192 kHz. Note that if you are connected to a host computer, clock source and sample rate will be grayed out since your music software or operating system determines those settings. You'll need to go there if you want to change these settings. S-MUX mode is for when you are bringing in ADAT signals in 88.2 or 96 kHz. You have two options, normal or force. The normal option should work in most cases and automatically detects the correct sample rate based on the incoming signal. Unfortunately, some ADAT products do not communicate high sample rate information correctly. That's why we have a force option that forces the AudioFuse 16 rig to interpret incoming ADAT signals at the 88.2 or 96k sample rates. The World Clock Termination menu lets you select 75 OHM or high z termination, ensuring that your World Clock connections are properly terminated. When switched on, World Clock Pass-Through relays incoming World Clock data directly to the World Clock output, letting other connected devices stay synchronized. Next, we have the Monitor Settings page. The Monitoring Button Mode drop-down menu sets the function of the Monitor button on the front panel. Options include Mono to quickly check your mix in Mono, Dim to temporarily bring down the sound levels on your speakers without losing your reference level, or AB speaker to switch between two sets of speakers. Each function has a different color, so you can tell at a glance what it does. Mono is green, Dim is orange, and AB speaker is blue. The front panel button flashes when it is activated. When it comes to the dim function, you can choose either minus 10 dB or minus 20 dB based on your preferences. Right next to it is an on-screen dim button that engages and disengages dimming without leaving the page. It's a handy way to test which amount of dimming you prefer. A quick note here to say that you need to enable the AB monitoring function before using it. If you've not enabled AB monitoring yet, you can set the monitoring button mode to switch between your A and B speakers but pressing it will do nothing until you switch the feature on. We cover this in detail in a different video. The Preferences page includes clipping reset time and orange threshold color levels. The clipping reset determines how long a clip light stays lit before resetting itself, while threshold color orange sets the point at which your VU meter turns orange. These options don't affect sound in any way and are based on your personal preference, 
So experiment and set them in whatever way that is comfortable for you. Pro tip, if you set the clipping reset time to infinite, you can clear the clip indicators by long pressing the main encoder. Lastly, we have a system info page with details about your hardware like serial number or firmware revision. Now, let's discuss the presets menu. Presets let you store the entire state of the interface in one convenient snapshot that you can load later. You'll probably have very different workflows and setups when you do things like mixing a live gig, recording podcasts, mixing a song, or reamping instruments, so you can create separate presets for each scenario. You can then recall that preset instantly without having to configure the interface every time. A real time saver. The preset save page lets you do the saving. Use the drop menu to select which of the eight available memory slots you would like to use and click the save button to save. A star lets you know that alterations have been made to the original preset. The preset load lets you load saved presets. Use the drop menu to select and load a previously saved preset. Notice the convenient reload icon. If you have loaded a preset and made changes to it but want to go back to the original preset, just click this button to immediately reload it. The rear panel of the AudioFuse 16 rig has an extensive array of connectors. Let's go through them section by section. Positioned at the far right are 16 TRS balanced analog inputs. With so many high quality inputs at your command, you can leave all your instruments hooked up and record ready at all times. Note that if you connect something to the front panel inputs 1 and 2, the system assumes you want to use these inputs and ignores rear inputs 1 and 2. However, you can always force the system to listen to the rear inputs by switching on the rear button for that channel. The same applies to front inputs 3 and 4. If you connect something to the 1 8 inch front panel input, rear inputs 3 and 4 will be ignored unless you press the rear button. Now let's explore the analog outputs. First, there are 8 balanced analog line level outputs. You can connect these to any line level device like an effect processor or a line input of a synth. What's cool is that these outputs are DC coupled. This means that you can use them to transmit DC control voltages to external modular synthesizers or other analog synths, letting you control them directly from your music software, if your software supports this. Another cool option is that if you enable AB monitoring, you can connect a second pair of studio monitors to any pair of line outputs and instantly switch between your main and alternate monitors. We'll cover this in detail in a separate video. These balance jacks are dedicated to your primary set of studio monitors and are independent from the other eight line outputs. You can use the monitor knob on the front panel to control the loudness level. On the rear panel, you'll find ADAT and Weld clock ports. The four ADAT ports use optical toslink connectors and provide 16 channels of input-output at sampling rates up to 48 kHz or eight channels of input-output at sampling rates up to 96 kHz. Beneath these, you'll find B and C connectors for world clock in and out. You can use these to synchronize all your digital equipment to the same clock signal, ensuring that high quality sound is maintained. Finally, we have a MIDI in and a pair of assignable MIDI out through jacks on 5-pin DIN connectors. Next to the MIDI jacks, there's a 3.5mm jack that provides an analog MIDI clock pulse, specifically for use with modular synthesizers and analog synthesizers. Besides that, you'll see a rear panel USB-A port. This is the second port of 16 rigs internal USB hub. It's a convenient place to connect MIDI controllers, USB keys, thumb drives, and other peripherals. The USB-C port is used to connect the interface to your computer. It carries all audio, MIDI, and other data to and from your computer. And finally, you'll find the locking connector designed for the AudioFuse 16 rigs power supply. And that's it for this overview. Thank you everyone for joining me in this detailed exploration, and if you want to learn a bit more about AudioFuse 16 Rig, make sure to check out the remaining tutorials and videos on our channel. If you liked what you just saw, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe as well. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.